In this other machine example, we're trying to find the compressive force at E. So it's basically compressing this, uh, this ball right here, this metal ball. And we're applying a force at the handle F, which is 300 newtons. And we're given that the force is perpendicular to the handle. So um, the first thing I'm going to do is actually explode this machine into its various parts. And then I'll get back to you when we draw the forces on the various diagrams. So this is a very rough drawing of what the machine is like when all the pieces are taken uh, apart. So um, let's apply the forces so we know a force F goes along here, which is perpendicular to the handle. And we know there's a pin here. So we could say that this is going to be a Y. This is going to be a X. So by using Newton's third law, this should look this like this. It'll be a X and this will be a Y. And then there is a two force member right here. So I'm going to say this is R and this is R. And then this must be R in that direction by Newton's third law. And then we apply that on this free body diagram. And then what else do we know? We know that um, there's a, compre or a compressive force being applied here. So this can be E. This is going to be E that way. And then there must be a reaction force here based on the other part of the machine. And that will be E on this machine. Actually, it'll be pointing downward. And then this actually, this portion of the machine, let me show you here. This portion of the machine cannot rotate about this bar. So what we can say is that there's a moment being applied here. So this is a moment. And then there's a moment being applied on this by Newton's third law. So it should be something that goes like that. So that'll be M. And that should be everything we need to solve this uh, problem. Actually, we need to do some geometry again. Um, because the only thing that we do not know for certain is what angle at which this R vector or this reaction vector is uh, occurring. So we need to find the angle such that it, it's uh, either this angle right here or this angle right here. So we have to look for that by using some of the geometry or dimensions that are given in the problem. So I'm going to do that right here. So right here, as you can see, it makes a right, I mean a triangle. Uh, and what we're looking at really, let me draw it out. We're looking at this triangle. So it looks something like that. It points downward. And what's special about this triangle is that these two sides are equal. So, and we're given this angle 75 degrees. And we know that this line, this green line, is perpendicular to this line right here. So if we know that, let me draw this triangle out again. So we are given that this is 75 degrees. We know this is a right triangle. So by the supplementary rule, we know that this angle right here is 15 degrees. And this is side length is equal to that side length. So we can actually say this is 15 degrees. And from there, we can determine this angle, which is the angle we need. We'll call this alpha. We can say that alpha equals 15 degrees by using the idea of transversal lines. So we could say that and that. So this angle right here is equal to this angle right here by transversal lines. And that is the angle we need to determine which direction R is pointing. So R is pointing. Uh, 15 degrees from the vertical so we could say that this angle right here is 15 degrees and we could use that to solve our problem so I'm going to redraw this free body diagram because this is the first diagram we're going to look at and we're going to analyze it further so given this free body diagram um, we don't know the vectors a y a x and r and we do know the value for f However, uh, we can solve this problem for by solving for R by taking the moment about A. Because if we take the moment about A, we don't need these vectors A, Y, and A, X because they don't cause moments about A. So we could say that the moment about A, and we can define this way as positive, 
equals, we'll start with the force vector f, so it'll be f times the perpendicular distance from uh, f to a, so that'll be 0 0.3 meters, and it's positive because it's because it's causing rotation in that direction. And then we could look at the force, um, the various components of R and apply the concept of moments about A for the vector R. So we could say R cosine, we could say add R cosine 15 degrees. R cosine 15 degrees is Ry. So we want the perpendicular distance from Ry to A. So it'll be something like this from here to here. And it's positive because you can imagine pushing on this lever arm, it'll cause rotation in this direction, which is consistent with our diagram right here. So our cosine 15 and its perpendicular distance is going to be 0 0.150 cosine of 75 degrees. So if you're wondering where I got that 75 degrees, if you look on this diagram up here, we know, um, this creates a right triangle right here. So if we, uh, if all the angles in the triangle add up to 180, then this angle right here must be 75 degrees. So on this diagram, that would be this angle right here. So this is 75 degrees. Now to do the X component of R, we just write R sine of 15 degrees, which is alpha. And then we can multiply it by the perpendicular distance from Rx to A, which is going to be 0 0.150 times the sine of 75 degrees. And that's just simply the perpendicular distance from here to here. And we're given the hypotenuse of this triangle. So this is be 0 0.150 and this is 75 degrees. So that's where I'm getting these values from. And what we can do is move this equation around a bit. And what we'll get is that R equals this quantity. So it'd be 0 0.15, factor that out. So what you get for R is equal to negative 1200 Newtons. So now that we have that, we know the value of R and our goal is to find this compressive force E. We can now look at this diagram. So I'm going to redraw this and we'll continue with this problem. So although there's a moment in this free body diagram, we really don't need it. What we can say is that the sum, uh, we can define our axes right here, so X and Y. And I forgot there is actually a normal force being applied right here as well. I forgot about that. I'm very sorry about that. So if you look at this diagram, this, uh, this body right here cannot rotate and it's a smooth contact force right here. So there's actually a normal force pointing in that direction. And that means there's a normal force pointing in that direction, this diagram. I'm very sorry about that. If that confused you any in, in drawing the free body diagram. So there's actually a normal component there. Um, but that does not affect the problem. So what we have to do is actually sum the forces in the Y. So sum of the forces in the Y is going to be R sine of 75 degrees and then plus E and that equals zero. So our goal is to find E. So that's very simple in this equation. So E is going to equal negative R sine 75. And we know that R is negative 1200 Newtons. So we could say E is negative uh, 1200 Newtons times negative one times the sine of 75 degrees. And once you plug this in your calculator, what you actually get is that E is equal to 1159.111 Newtons. So to quickly recap of what we just did, uh, well, the first thing we did was to explode this machine into its various parts and drew free uh, drew the forces on each free body diagram as shown here um, I did forget this normal force in the beginning of the video but it does not affect uh, solving this problem so it's fine but uh, just keep in mind that this bar right here uh, is a smooth contact force with this uh, portion of the machine and it does this portion cannot rotate so it creates a moment a reaction moment and it also creates a reaction moment here, but pointing in the opposite direction. 
So, and then there's a normal force on these two body diagrams. And using Newton's law, they point in opposite directions. So we applied uh, the basic idea of reaction forces on these free body diagrams. And we use these free body diagrams to solve the, the compressive force at E. And we looked at this free body diagram first, took moments about A because we get rid of these two variables, A, Y, and A, X, which allows us to solve for this force vector R um, directly by taking the moments about A. And then we use the force vector R in this free body diagram and simply sum the, uh, sum the forces in the Y direction and uh, to find the compressive force E to equal 1,159.111. Uh, Newtons.